over the last few months, we have seen tremendous advancements in large language models as well as AI-generated images and videos. But this could be one of the biggest advancements in AI and machine learning. Yesterday, Chris Lettner, the inventor of Swift programming language, announced the creation of a new programming language called Mojo, which is built on top of Python. And if you know, Python is the basis of all machine learning applications right now. However, one of the biggest problem with Python is it's considered to be pretty slow compared to other languages such as C or C++. But according to Chris, this new language, Mojo, is about 35,000 times faster than Python. Now, if this can hold true, this literally changes everything. But wait, this is not it. There's one more feature which all the developers would love. So according to Chris, Mojo combines the usability of Python with the performance of C, unlocking unparalleled programmability of AI hardware and extensibility of AI models. If you have worked with Python, uh, you are probably familiar. It is very slow. Now, if you have ever worked uh, on a, any AI application in Python, you probably know that Python is extremely slow and it has very poor speed. That is one of the reasons that a lot of time, Python is simply using a wrapper around a C application. So for example, if you have worked with NumPy, TensorFlow, or PyTorch, they are basically written in C, but they provide a wrapper that you can use in Python. Now, specifically for AI applications, you actually need to go um, one step deeper and you really need to work with on the hardware level. So for example, a lot of time you will see uh, the dependencies on CUDA, right? Uh, that is essentially the lowest level programming that you need. And if you have ever tried to set up CUDA on Windows or Linux machine, it can be a nightmare. That is yet another motivation for Mojo because you can write everything in one language now. So in this case, the programs with multitude of low level AI hardware, so you don't really need any C++ or CUDA. This alone is literally a game changer for developers. Now, great thing about Mojo is that it is a superset of Python, which means that Python code will work in Mojo. That is uh, great news for developers because you don't really need to learn a completely new language, but you can rather use your Python knowledge and implement things in Mojo. Now, let's look at some of the features before we look at more of the syntax and how you can use it. So, it lets you utilize the power of hardware, including multiple cores, vector units, and exotic accelerator units with the world's most advanced compilers and heterogeneous runtime. Basically, you will be able to utilize the full potential of your hardware. So for example, uh, Python is a single ex thread execution. So it's a simple sequential execution, but Mojo will uh, enable parallel processing across multiple cores. That in, it in itself will give you a huge performance boost now, here is a simple comparison of how much speed improvement you can uh, expect. For example, to run a fractal algorithm, Python can take up to 17 minutes, but the Mojo will take only 0 0.03 seconds to run the same algorithm. This is going to be insane, and uh, it will give you a huge performance boost. Now, they claim to have full compatibility with Python ecosystem. That means that when it's completely ready, you will be able to use Python code inside Mojo. So for example, here they have provided an example of how you uh, can create a plot using matplotlib uh, package from Python in Mojo. So you will simply import it like python.import module, and then uh, you simply import the matplotlib uh, package, and the rest is very similar to what you would see in normal Python. So as I said before, Mojo is designed to become a superset of Python over time, so that means that it will have all the features of Python. But right now, it seems like some of the Python features are actually missing. Over time, they will uh, include all the Python features, so we'll see how that goes. Now, there are definitely some intentional differences from, from Python. We will talk about this in a minute. Now, let's look at a few more programming features uh, of Mojo before talking about how can you access it. So, for example, Here's an implementation of a softmax function in Python. Now, the Mojo implementation is very similar 
this uh, struct seems to be something close to a class in Python. So here are some more features. For example, it has progressive types, so leverage types for better performance and error checking. It is, seems to be similar to type hinting in Python. Next, uh, they talk about zero cost abstraction. So take control of storage by inline allocating values into structures. So I think that you can define the data types in line. For example, if you see here, you have a variable first and second, and the corresponding data types of integer and float 32. The next feature is ownership plus borrow checker. So take advantage of memory safety without rough edges. Uh, I, I think I heard somebody saying that it's as safe as a rest, but we'll have to wait and see. Now, uh, there is another one, portable uh, parametric algorithms, leverage compile time, metaprogramming to write hardware agnostic algorithms and reduce boilerplate. This is going to be significant, but I am more interested in the last one, uh, language integrated auto-tuning. So automatically find the best values for your parameters to take advantage of your target hardware. This is going to be significant because right now, spend a lot of time on compiling your packages for different hardware. If this holds true it will save a lot of time so why python why they have modeled mojo on top of python well the answer is very simple python is the language of ai and machine learning right now all of the most famous machine learning packages are actually implemented in python or they have a wrapper uh, for c or c++ implementation and that, that makes it a very great candidate to design a language around it now if you're a programmer I would really encourage you to actually go and start looking at the documentation because this could potentially be the next big thing in AI and machine learning. I personally have started looking at some of the documentation and there are some very interesting uh, things. For example, you have this uh, Mojo programming manual. So overall, it seems to be very similar to Python. And then there are uh, some other differences. For example, this basic system programming extension. So now they have this let and var declaration that you can use with your variables now uh the last part that i want to talk about is how you can actually try this so unfortunately this is not yet openly available to everybody you actually need to go and uh, sign up to get an early access to the mojo background uh, from what i understand it takes a couple of days to get the access i have already uh, applied for early access so hopefully we'll be getting that soon now from their description this looks to be very similar to Jupyter notebook and you can play around with even the extension actually of the file is ipython notebooks uh, so it will be a very familiar uh, interface as i said in the start if they can actually deliver on their promises this is going to be a significant step uh, and it's actually great to get started early because this will give you an extra advantage in the cutting edge field of machine learning and artificial intelligence. So this was a quick update on this amazing new programming language. I am excited about it uh, and will be learning more about it. If you like the video, please uh, share and subscribe to the channel. If there are any questions, uh, don't forget to leave a comment. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.